Good evening everybody, welcome back to the channel. Drum roll please, the votes are in. Uh, review of drilling came to, got 13 votes. Review of spring barley got two votes, but the winner was an explanation of uh, the results from the low input farming. So, low input it is. Um, I'm going to try something different today. I'm going to try and record myself and uh, give you access to my screen at the same time. So we'll see how that goes. Right. Uh, firstly, let me start with a quick explanation. Uh, I'm in a privileged position where our diversified profits are greater than the arable profits. And as a result, with the upcoming reduction in government support, I don't want to use these profits to subsidize my arable farming operation. Hence why I am so interested in whether uh, high input, high output farming actually offers a genuinely more profit or whether there is an alternative method. So last year, I started the process by reviewing organic trial data as supplied by the uh, Organic Farmers and Growers uh, Group, which showed their average winter wheat yield was around 4.2 tonnes per hectare. So on this farm with our clay land, our 10 year average is 8.2. That's sold net of everything, 8.2 nearly double what the organic average is, a net gain of four tonnes per hectare. So if we then go over to the spreadsheets, I'll explain what uh, conclusions I drew. I'm trying to identify whether it's worthwhile uh, plant going with a chemical uh, conventional system or whether I'm better off with a low input system. So as you can see here, I started off with my uh, 2019 harvest, so last year, and I said that for, I picked this field just because it yielded 8.2 tonnes around the 10 year average. So I thought it was a good point to start. Effectively, we get a four tonnes per hectare premium for using chemicals. And I've assumed that there's no extra, you know, no extra cost for seed, but otherwise all of these costs uh, are, are extra for running a conventional system. And that gave us um, an extra 97 pounds or 98 pounds of extra profit per hectare. And effectively, it cost us £108.50 to grow each one of these extra four tonnes of yield that we got as a result of growing a conventional system. So let's then look at 2019 and what changes we could make to reduce our costs. Well, the first thing is fungicides. Could we use very resistant genetics like KWS x to try and reduce our fungicide bill? Next, nitrogen. Could we uh, swap out artificial nitrogen for organic? Is there a chance that we could reduce our plant growth regulator spend if we weren't spending quite so much and on nitrogen and we didn't have such a fleshy green plant. And finally, if we have less N floating around in a soil, less soluble N, would we get less weed pressure? So let's have a look at the results 2019 to 2020. So I pulled up the variance to give you a difference between the 2019 and the 2020. As you can see, the first shock is in fact the cost of the seed. Okay, this is X days, first season commercially available, very popular, 
high price, as a result, massive seed premium of uh, £177. And interestingly, that pretty much feeds straight down to the difference in the variable costs at the bottom. In fact, it cost us more to grow this low input crop than it did from the conventional system. But most of that is due to the seed. So next year, when we're home saving our X days, will we be in a better position? Let's hope so. Okay, next point. So let's conclude seed, that didn't help. Let's have a look at the fungicides. We managed to save a rather massive 58 pounds a hectare. So we'll give it a tick to the saving on fungicides. Artificial N, we managed to save 137 pounds, which looks great. Of course, we did spend more on organic manures and it's worth saying that it's not just the cost of the manure, it's also the cost of spreading it, which will be significant. Um, so that is not a cost to be underestimated. It's not included here. We don't have any fixed or machinery costs, but it's certainly a consideration for our business going forward. So let's say we give it a tick for less artificial nitrogen. Uh, plant growth regulators, less fleshy plant, did we get to save? No. In fact, in this particular example, it cost us more. Um, so a little cross against less PGRs. The real headache with this particular comparison is herbicide spend. So as you can see here, we've actually increased our herbicide spend by a hundred pounds compared to last year. That's mostly down to the use of Avdex and continuously chasing uh, black grass. It's worth saying that um, there was a very good AHDB webinar this week, which talked about black grass control in a no glyphosate world and trying to ensure that your fields are as clean as possible as an entry glyphosate free world and there was a very interesting Danish scientist who was presenting on on the problems of organic systems and specifically weed control in organic systems and he made the point that people often converted to organics but subsequently left the system as they failed to control weeds so that's, that's a really take home lesson um, that you know, we've got to be careful with our weed burden going into this type of system. So overall, the yield was 5.8. And so my next concern is that looking back historically and concluding our yield, 10 year yield is 8.2, then probably the crop lacked nitrogen. So that is a yield limiting factor and something that I would like to review going forward. So uh, this week, I'd like to just thank uh, Nick Philp, who is uh, one of our viewers and uh, for his guidance on the possible role of Poly, Poly N Plus, uh, which is a Folia N product to help improve the availability of N to the plant without impacting on the soil biology by either applying liquid fert or applying a solid product. So thanks to Nick for his help and guidance this week. Uh, stay, view, stay tuned to see what the next development is. So this is a comparison of 2019 and 2020. That's what, but can we draw a comparison within 2020? So I have drawn, next I have drawn up this uh, comparison, which compares similar soil types on our farm, a crop of conventional versus a crop of low input. As you can see, um, you've got a yield penalty of 1.8 tonnes. The gross margin is considerably better on the conventional system and as 
indicated before, the variable costs are higher in the low cost system. But this is mostly, again, down to this £200 or £160 of extra seed cost, £130 of herbicide spend, and we do pull it back a little bit with saved nitrogen. So that is winter wheat. What about spring wheat? So in spring wheat, the story is a little bit more positive. The low input spring wheat, in fact, out yielded conventional. Uh, it's worth saying that this was a very strong field. This is the field where I showed you the difference in height and we went through the yield to combine yield data. Uh, there was a considerable nitrogen saving. This field got no, uh, no artificial end at all. It just received one treatment of 20 tonnes per hectare of compost. Um, it resulted in the variable costs being very similar, uh, but due to the yield, a better gross margin. So spring crop seemed to respond well, winter crop, weeds big problems so my conclusion would be possibly low input has a role in spring cropping more so than winter cropping when you are struggling with a black grass burden i hope you've all enjoyed this video it's been um, a little difficult to put together and um, hopefully, um, well, I will be turkey plucking next week, so I'm not sure if we're going to be getting a video out. I shall try my best, but uh, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, please tell your friends about it. I think uh, regenerative agriculture is all about peer support and helping each other make the decisions. And I would really appreciate if the, you could give us a thumbs up, help the algorithm, algorithms and make recommendations to your friends. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, see you next time.